This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. In his State of the Union address on January 8, 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson urged Congress and the citizens of the United States to do everything necessary to end poverty in our country. With Sergeant Shriver at the helm, the war on poverty took shape as a comprehensive effort to address the needs of the nation's poor, nearly half of whom were children. Enacted by the 88th Congress, the Economic Opportunity Act created a preschool program that would change the way we educate our children. It would give them a head start and work to eliminate the cycle of poverty in our country. We set out to make certain that poverty's children would not be forevermore poverty's capital, captives. On May 18, 1965, President Johnson announced the creation of Project Head Start in a White House Rose Garden ceremony. He spoke about the importance of investing in children, and Head Start launched that summer as an eight-week program serving half a million children nationwide. I believe that this is one of the most constructive and one of the most sensible and also one of the most exciting program that this nation has ever undertaken. The following year, after a remarkable first summer, Congress authorized Head Start as a year-round program. In the mid-70s, Head Start served more than 5.3 million children in every corner of our nation. The first Head Start program performance standards were created in 1975. They outlined guidelines and expectations for all Head Start programs. By 1984, the Head Start budget exceeded the $1 billion mark, and the program had served 9.1 million children in its nearly 20-year history. Few things could be more central to the life and health of our nation than the education of our children. In the early 1990s, President George H.W. Bush proposed a 27% increase in Head Start spending to expand access to preschool for low-income families. I've often said that governments can't raise children, that people have to do that. But parents need help in a lot of places in this country today, just like they did 29 years ago. Then, in 1994, the Head Start Reauthorization Act created new opportunities for Head Start to lead early care and education. The act helped Head Start keep true to communities, parents, and children by building on the vision and recommendations contained in a report issued by the Advisory Committee on Head Start Quality and Expansion. 1994 also saw the creation of the Early Head Start program to address the comprehensive needs of pregnant women and low-income children under the age of three. Early Head Start programs first opened their doors to pregnant women, infants, and toddlers the summer of 1995. The Head Start Reauthorization Act of 1998 allowed full day and year services, set education standards for teachers, and focused renewed attention on school readiness and literacy. Our budget increases the funding for Head Start while giving it a clear mission. In 2007, Congress passed the Improving Head Start for School Readiness Act. This act preserved Head Start as a federal to local program, strengthened state roles, and enhanced standards for education workforce and accountability. I firmly believe that Head Start is an outstanding program and a critical investment. We are proud of what you are doing. You've got a president who's got your back. By 2010, with the help of federal, state, and local partners, Head Start had invested in more than 27 million children since its inception in 1965. But the path hasn't always been easy. Sequestration in 2013 caused more than 57,000 children to lose their seats in Head Start classrooms. The $427 million budget cut had a massive impact on Head Start's ability to serve the most vulnerable children in our country. But on January 13, 2014, Head Start programs breathe a sigh of relief when Congress passed the spending bill to fully restore funding. Later that year, Head Start received a $1 billion increase in funding, including a new investment in early Head Start child care partnerships. As early childhood education expanded and became more prominent in state capitals and in Washington, D.C., Head Start continued to lead the way. In the past five years, bipartisan support in Congress and across administrations have led to federal funding increases for Head Start of more than $2 billion per year. Head Start program standards, already known as the gold standard for high quality in the early childhood field, were completely overhauled in 2016. This first comprehensive rewrite in Head Start history allowed Head Start to embrace the principles of continuous quality improvement and better utilize data to improve services for children and families. With new and unique challenges facing children and families due to COVID-19, Head Start will remain a stabilizing force for families and communities throughout these turbulent times. With 37 million alumni over the past 55 years, Head Start has provided generations of children the opportunity for success in school and in life.
Head Start is building future legacies every day. Current students and parents who will make a positive difference in the communities and the world for years to come.